Hello. Today we're going to talk about our new Troop of the Most patch program that our troops can earn. The reason that we've changed the old Super Troop model badge program and created something new was because we don't want it to be difficult. Rather, we want this to be a all-inclusive, lifting up, elevating of your troop experience. So let's get right to it. Troop of the most. All activities are designed to enhance and supplement ongoing troop programs. So ultimately, what does that mean? It means that the purpose of this patch program for Girl Scout troops of the most is designed to fit comfortably into a troop's yearly plan of a girl-led experience. A wide variety of fun activities, individual and group participation, value development and skill building, interaction with troops at the same and different levels, exploration of potential roles of women, understanding and appreciation of several cultures other than our own, and active participation in the community. That is an overreaching, simplified explanation of what this patch program is going to be. How will you know what different steps you have to take? Well, we will have a very easy printout for you to take a look at. And then when it's time to submit, you're just going to use the jot form that we've created. And then when it is submitted and approved, your troop will receive your beautiful patches, which I will unveil at the end of this presentation. We know that regardless of whether you have been a brand new troop or a troop that's been around for a long time, things continue to change in the world around us, making us feel lost, a little crazed, if you will. And we're the ones that are helping set the tone for this girl-led organization. So having a clear-cut goal to follow really helps guide, just like a map would. So things like welcoming families to Girl Scouts, that means that you don't have a closed troop. That means you allow more girls to join in. A big troop is a better troop. I come from having 21 girls in my troop for all the years I was a leader, and I can guarantee you there's less drama in a big troop, and there's way more help. Ensure that girls know they belong to a big sisterhood. Well, big sisterhood is all of our councils, not just a small, tiny troop. Guide girls to develop as leaders, allowing every girl to have a voice. Girls taking action in their community. Girls earning at least two badges. Badges are different than fun patches. This is a fun patch program. Badges are something that have programmatic by each level progression, go on the front of the vest, sash, or smock, where fun patches go on the back. I like to think of it very much like a mullet, business in front, party in the back, well, this is a fun patch program, but we want our girls to earn at least two badges through the year. Girls expand their worldview. That means that they're investigating and learning. Celebrate with a ceremony or tradition like bridging or investitures, flag ceremonies. Used a girl-friendly, girl-led approach. That means that your girls are leading their troop. And as we know, progressionally, daisies run 10% of their troop where their leader is running 90% of it. But by the time our girls are ambassadors, 90% of that program should be run by those ambassadors with that 10% being what the leaders are assisting with, which quite frankly, are the business pieces, going to the bank with the girls, running the financials with the girls, filling out the troop financial report with the girls, encouraging girls to earn and learn through the Girl Scout cookie program. The cookie program is so much more than deliciousness. It truly is the foundation of self-esteem and five core business practices. Renew 90% of your girls and troop leaders for the 22-23 season. Having girls come back is just as much a responsibility of our troop leaders as it is the council ensuring that our volunteers are lifted up and that you have excellent programming to attend. We're all in this together to keep this mission alive. 110 years strong, but without our girls and without you, that doesn't continue. So 90% renewal. Inspire girls to continue to grow through Girl Scouting. That's all through that progression. So some responsibilities and requirements of a troop leader that do not directly touch on program, but are yet a vital for troops well-being. This will be part of earning that beautiful new patch. Sorry, stumbling on my words. That'll be part of our learning, learning and earning that new patch. So recruits troop volunteers. 
you want to hold parent meetings at least once a year to keep parents informed about program activities and to gain support for your troop. I personally like to have at least two, one in the beginning, then one right before the cookie program so that the girls can explain to the caregivers what their troop goals are. Because when you participate in the cookie program, it needs to come from a goal that they've set. What do they want to do? What do they want to achieve? What's their community service? We're going to renew all the girls. What does that cost? This is then how many cookies we need to sell. You need to get that caregiver uh, buy-in and that comes from the girl. Registers troops during assigned registration time. That means that we're early birding or just in timing. We're not waiting to just before cookies register our girls. We want girls renewed and registered on time. Why? Because when you've got girls that are still participating as Girl Scouts but are not registered, they don't have any insurance. Insurance through Girl Scouting is very important. So not only are they a member of a sisterhood because they're renewed, they're also covered by Girl Scout insurance. Don't wait. Renew on time so that those memberships never lapse. Manages troop finances. That means that troop financial reports are turned in on time. That means that this patch cannot be earned unless your troop financial report is turned in when it's supposed to be at the end of the year, the end of the Girl Scout year. Um, meets membership requirements, minimum five girls, two adults for a legal troop, unless you are a senior and ambassador troop, and that can be three girls, two adults. Anything less than that is not a legal troop. Abides by national and local Girl Scout policies, standards, and procedures. Completes the leader prep series, meaning you've taken your TLO, you've done your grade level training, you've done your troop money management. If you are going camping, you've done your troop basic camping staying abreast of all of your training. Maintains knowledge of the troop level program through participation in Girl Scout adult education courses, like those of you that join us at the volunteer summit. And we will be doing more volunteer summits, but this time we're gonna break it up into a one day in spring and a one day in fall. That way we can really be within that year of Girl Scouting so that spring training will be all about camping and travel and anything that you're going to do in the summer activities type training. And then the fall summit being where there's air conditioning, all about what's going on with the new badge programs, progression, bridging. So separating it, but that would count towards this. Has a leader or member of the troop at 100% of your service unit meetings. Now, if your service unit only does three meetings a year and you attended all three, that counts as 100%. And you yourself don't have to be there. Send a caregiver, have them report back out, but you must have 100% participation at your service unit meetings. Don't know that you have service unit meetings or don't know how to get involved. We all have these glorious phones. If you go on our website on the volunteer tab, drop down to your service unit. It tells you when the meetings are and who your service unit manager is. We also have Facebooks in each one of our service units that can let you know what's going on. Staying in the loop and being in the loop is really important. A lot of required activities here, and I'm not gonna go through them you know, in depth because it's gonna be on your form, but basically it just delineates what we just spoke about. Registering your girls with that 90% level, re-registering your adults, making sure your training is on time, active in your service units, participating in the cookie program, doing a badge and or journey based on your age level. All the things that you should be doing all throughout the year. Participating in at least five of the below, outdoors or careers, STEM, healthy living, looking forward, bridging, going to events, travel, planning, inviting new girls into your troop. So five of those things from that list. Again, this is all about having that well-rounded troop that isn't just focused on one area of interest, but rather really taking from the buffet of Girl Scout opportunities and program. Then doing four of the below ceremonies, having a troop planned or participated in ceremony, flag ceremony, investiture, rededication, court of awards, a scout's own, or a thinking day world association. So four of those, we should be doing those anyways. Flag ceremonies and or promise in law at the beginning of every meeting counts. 
um, having a court of awards. That's when you give the girls their badges and patches in a beautiful ceremony. We do so much throughout the year that we oftentimes forget how much we do. So when you do a court of awards within your troop and you invite the caregivers, they see what their girls have been doing. The girls feel honored for all that they've done. That would count towards this. Doing a scout zone badge. That means that the girls have gotten together in a girl led environment, again, girl scouting, and decided to do a program of their own. And then thinking day or world association day, this is when they look beyond their own borders. And sometimes their borders are their home. Looking at the land that we live upon, looking at the people who are in the next state, we're in the next country, really looking beyond ourselves. These events are so wonderful to attend and or to put on. This is the beautiful patch that our girls would earn from doing all of those things. And none of those things are too hard or too much. That's what a well-rounded Girl Scout troop looks like. And in a girl-led environment, and you have planned out your year, which is what we should be doing at the beginning of the year, planning what we want to do, where we want to go, what is the goal for our troop this year? And for us personally, as we grow, we then will fill out this form, which quite frankly is going to be super easy. It's a, you know, a jot form. You just click all the things you did, put the dates of when you did it, and then it will submit directly to us. And then we will get the patches back out to you at no cost to your troop, a gift from us. And for those of us that love the sparkle, this will have beautiful gold sparkle thread to really accentuate the rays coming behind the trefoil because being a troop of the most is something to be celebrated. A little note that I wanna remind everybody, the cookie program I love, but it is a business program, meaning just like a job, you have to take days off because if you don't, you get burned out. So as you're doing your girl planning to be the troop of the most, make sure within that planning and within that six weeks of cookies, you have planned outings, badges, fun for the girls for their days off and for your days off. Because in order to truly teach our girls self-care, and self-worth, we have to remind them that taking a day off is not only okay, it is necessary. We find greater success in a well-rounded space when we remember that self is not selfish. And when we talk about troop of the most, we are talking the entire girl experience. Thank you for watching. I hope that you go after this new beautiful patch program. Again, you don't have to watch the video, but those of you that stayed with me all the time, I appreciate your attention. And these will also be going out in the caregiver newsletters so that everybody can see the new opportunities. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.